like most of us, you look at your high street and see boarded up shops, charity ventures and the same dreary brands as everywhere else, don't despair. You could be living in Dewsbury or Dudley or Hartlepool or Margate, Stockport or West Bromwich, which Newsnight has discovered will be named as the towns with the highest proportion of unoccupied shops later this week. The government claims to be troubled by what's happening to high streets across the land and has asked Mary Portis, so-called Queen of Shops, to investigate and come up with ideas for bringing some life back to the high street. Steve Smith has been out with her. <laughs> Whoever said it's grim up north never saw a walkabout in Rotherham by telly fashionista Mary Portis. It's brilliant. See, it's something different, isn't it? David Cameron's Shops Czar. Wow, look at this. That said, not even her copper bob and towering heels could entirely distract the eye from vacant premises and cut price discount chains. Pound shops are catching on here. <laughs> Probably not for you, but they're Probably saying. Probably not for you either. Possibly not. Is that a pound What do you think of the schmutz? Very nice. This is something I believe in. As someone who spent 25 years in retail, this is what I believe in, and I would be looking at this and doing this despite government. If government support it, which I'm hoping they will, then we will be able to hopefully leverage this a lot quicker than if I was doing this on my own or working with councils. They're all right like that for you. Yeah. At this baker's in Rotherham town centre, they mostly warm up snacks for office workers. They say people prefer to go to supermarkets for the family loaf and the big shop. Other outlets have simply disappeared. There's no gents outlets, no gents, no toy shops. What kiddies can't, you know, entertain your kiddies for half an hour in a toy shop. There's nothing like that. They just stand, stand them in Argos, let them look through a catalogue. It's not the same for a kiddie. They like to have touchy-feely things, don't they? You better shop around. Oh, yeah, you better shop around. Shop, shop around. In the shopping jargon, the footfall has all been going away from the high street in many parts of the country. But analyst Matthew Hopkinson has been heading in the opposite direction, crunching the number of shops as they shut. As recently as two years ago, only 6% of shops on Britain's high streets were disused. Now more than 14% of them are. That's 29,000. The reality that comes out of this is that we have got permanent change here and that some of these centres who are right up in the high, one in three shops being vacant, will never go back to what they used to be and therefore there has to be some kind of change of use or purpose for that centre. In some towns, well over a quarter of shops are idle and shut up. Newsnights discovered that the six places with the biggest problem include Hartlepool, Dewsbury and Stockport in the north, Dudley and West Bromwich in the Midlands and Margate in the south. And even very respected people are saying, get rid of the high street, it's finished. It's out of town. I think there Mars. are some towns, I don't think it's finished, that's just, that's ridiculous. We have towns where it is working. There are towns where it's dead. The, the horse has bolted and it's unfair. And just you, give up on those. Give up. I think there's some towns where we have to look at, and we have to look at a rejuvenation and a regeneration that will be different and whether that's housing or looking about how you can change some of the towns. That has to be done. It's bonkers to say that we can do them all. We won't be able to do them all. But there are many towns vis-a-vis -vis one here that have great potential to do that. And it's looking at what that new business model will be and looking at how consumers have changed. This is the, the severed foot, or leg, should I say. Uh, 2 .99. Fantastic for the kids for the Halloween dip. What will they be going for? Um, an arm and a leg. Very good. <laughs> he did the match. He did the monster match. The monster match. Yes, more delicate retailers may recoil in horror, but pile them high, sell them cheap stores like this one are rising from the tomb of the high street as we knew and loved it. No, I don't want it. The low budget shops, which are opening as others go dark, score well on price and convenience, but they claim they can only operate at bargain basement wage levels. They did the match. They did the we pay the minimum wage and then obviously the staff, um, the supervisors and the managers are obviously on more money, yeah. Um, Is that but fair that... and ethical, do you think? Are you making profits on the back of your workers? Absolutely not, not. no. Extent? We're either here and trading at, at the absolute 
minimum on the profit margins. The profit margins are very thin. You were right in what you said earlier. It's stack it high and sell it cheap. And that's the only way we can do it. But um, So you couldn't afford to pay them more? The we model couldn't. Just wouldn't the, the model wouldn't work. But on the day the shop czar came to town, Newsnight found evidence of some innovative thinking in Rotherham. Council workers tried to brighten the centre by getting rid of chewing gum. They turned the mess into a crime scene out of an old detective movie. Is that what they meant by gumshoe? We remember people, we remember the names that come yeah. back. Hello, Mrs. You know, Porter's yeah. here again. And after this shoe shop owner was refused a loan by the banks to expand his business, the borough council are thinking of stepping in to act as guarantor. They'd wanted to buy the buildings themselves, and then when the new government came in, they said, look, draw a line under that, don't spend any more money. That's when we stepped in to try it. They've been very, very supportive, and now they're going to kind of be guarantors against a mortgage for us. We won't get any money, we have to pay every penny back, but they'll be there behind us and sort of assuring the, whoever the lender is that we'll repay it. And what, don't you want Mary to buy a pair of your boots while she's here? <laughs> she can have she a pair if she wants a pair. <laughs> Is that news tonight? Ever sophisticated? <laughs> That's us. What's very curious about the shop czar, including perhaps for the ministers who recruited her, is that she believes shops aren't necessarily the answer. I don't know whether I'm optimistic. I'm realistic. And I'm going to give it my best shot in thinking on what the retail future can be for town centres and also it might not be the mix that we've seen. In fact, I probably guess it won't be the mix that we've seen over the last 20 years, and that we'll be looking at a very different mix, and it might not all be retail on the towns. Um, it might be social meeting places, and any reason to get people back into this, because if we don't, we will have some really social problems on our hands, and I think we've seen that, you know, even with the riots, that if there isn't a sense of belonging. Mary Porter says she's had no guarantees from government that they'll implement her advice in the autumn when she offers the high street her brand of retail therapy. Well, now, Rodney Fitch has styled many of Britain's most familiar shop fronts and interiors, including Topshop, Boots and WH Smiths, and Philip Blonde, a self-styled Red Tory, is the founder and director of the think tank Res Publica. What business is it of the government to try to preserve high streets? Well, I think the business of the government is to represent the interests of the people. And I think very clearly a, an overwhelming majority of people in this country care very deeply about the high street, the mix of it, well, and what's happening to Well, in it. that case, why don't they shop there? Well, I think you've hit on one of the, the issues. I mean, what I think is interesting is people kind of can will one thing and do another. But I think what's really interesting is actually if we look at what's happening to our town centres, there's three factors. There's, there are, I think, genuinely uncompetitive practices going on by, for instance, supermarkets or out-of-town developments. There are subsidies to that business model. And quite frankly, also, small shops and local shops need to get their act together. A lot of them are pretty awful, and we do need a new way of delivering local retail. Now, Rodney Fitch, from, from where you, if you, you would agree, as a member of this society, that it's better that we have healthy high streets than unhealthy high streets, presumably. I think I would agree that we have... It's better that we have healthy shopping rather than necessarily healthy high streets. I mean, I think I agree with Mary um, and that little film that we've seen, that there are some high streets which are very good, there are other high streets which are very poor, and the people deserve better. I mean, it's all right to talk about government intervention. It's all right to talk about the government should do this and the government should do that. But the people will choose. Sure, but you don't live by shopping alone, do you? Uh, more or less, yes, it is the purpose of life, more or less, yes. It's a, huge, uh, it's a huge economic driver. It's what people like to do. Uh, I know of a study that, that's been going on for 15 years across 19 countries, and at no time in any year has shopping been out of the top four things uh, okay, that I, people want to do. And you don't give a monkeys if people are going off to out-of-town shopping centres uh, where they see all the same sort of shops as they would see anywhere else and the heart of their town dies. Now that isn't true. Uh, they go well, to these no, places... I'm asking you whether they, you care or they, not. They, I, uh, I care about people shopping well. Okay. I care about that very much. And I think they will find... Our people find better shopping in places other than traditional high streets. I think, I think that it's not... 
it's not that people sort of need to stop shopping, it's they can shop differently. And the ways of shopping differently is changing the way in which we sell goods and the way in which we, in which we buy goods. But if we stay as we are, let's be clear, we'll have a shopping centre that's just full of clone stores, charity shops and pound shops. And nobody, in my view, in this country wants that. So we need to do something to well, change the game. Well, you know, he's got a vested interest in that and also he's, it's an interesting... Uh, comment to make, but I think in his heart of hearts he doesn't really believe that, and I bet where he chooses to live he won't select to live near in a town that has that sort of dead centre. Okay, apart from hoping that people suddenly mm. have some conversion to mm. shopping on the high street and that shopping mm. high street retailers sharpen their act up, do you have any other ideas what could be done with well, I think there's lots, of things, there's lots of things you can do. You can remove the subsidies that the present model that's leaching our high streets enjoy. Uh, one of those subsidies is rate relief on car parking. Essentially, in-town in retailing pays rates on car parking spaces. Out-of-town retailing doesn't. And what's interesting is the government has just, in the localism bill, has just moved to allow town centres for the first time to be free mm. to not charge uh, and to open up car parking in town centres. So you can major, do something. One of the major complaints by, by local people mm. is that they find it difficult to use their high streets, not just because there are the wrong shops there, but because the local authorities make it difficult no, that's for them right. to use that high and street. And, and, and the government, exciting? if the government is to be an interventionist government, which I personally worry about, they should be trying to join up the dots but, rather than but just... Rodney, you... Rodney, they already have. Um, in the last few d days, the government has shown very clearly it's removed the restrictions on car parking. So from now on, town centres will be free to do whatever they want in respect of, of car parks. Also, what's interesting is the government has once again reasserted the, the priority of in-town development. And as actually, for new development, it's doubled the period of time in, in which the assessment for sustainability takes place. So I think there it's, are things we could do. It's not inevitable, Jeremy. I mean, I, I well, think... Well, it sounds that, like King Canute. No, it's not King Canute, because already we have very successful town centres. I mean, Mary's already spoken about things that are doing well, things that can She's be She's also conceded some are going to go under. But I think that some can change. I mean, I think it's right that our, the mix of our town centres will be different, but they can be new ways to bring leisure to people, to theatre to people, new ways to make town centres exciting places. So unless local retail gets its act together, because what we have is small shopkeepers operating in ways that don't help the whole area, and we need them to operate as an area to change the mix of their area and to actually open it up to new entrants. Okay. We, 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 we really shouldn't think about some kind of romantic high street of the past Nobody's with the local butcher that. and the local baker, etc. You know, I mean, that what is What would you not... use it for, then? What would you use the high street yeah. for? Well, again, Mary gave something of an indication. I mean, there is so much innovation in the retail business. There is so much technology happening in the retail business. It's the most dynamic of industries. Retail will find its own level what to do with the high street. What it won't do is put back poor quality bakers, poor quality uh, <laughs> butchers, because the people won't go there. They but, nobody, but this it's a false choice. Nobody's arguing for that. Everybody wants to have high quality local retail. And there's lots of measures that you can do to generate that. You can remove the subsidies for a model that destroys our town okay. centres. And you can put in innovative new practices to change the mix, but to actually renew All right, we'll leave it there for the time being. And town.